Hey YouTube, I decided to buke the bullet and get myself a Minn Kota Altera trolling motor. There's a few reasons behind this. And one is that a lot of the fishing I do requires me to stay in one spot, which means throwing an anchor out. Uh, I've always had a bit of trouble figuring out just where the anchor needs to go for me to drift back onto the spot. Inevitably the wind or current changes and I drift off the spot so I've got to pull the anchor out, move and re-anchor. The other reason is that I think I'm getting just a little bit old to be crawling through the cavern all the time, pulling the anchor up and letting it down again. So the Altera motor seemed to be the ideal answer as an electronic anchor, as well as letting me do a bit of slow speed trolling. So anyway, being a fiberglass boat, it is a bit hard to fit it on here, so I'm going to do a video showing you just how I went about it. I could have mounted it directly to the boat, but I decided to use a quick release for a couple of reasons. Primarily because when we go away the boat's parked outside our cabin or maybe a tent and I wanted to be able to bring the Minkota inside where it's safe because I'm sorry to say you just can't trust people these days, if you ever could. The second reason is my wife's been talking about getting a big boat for a little while now and if that comes to pass I would like to be able to take the Minkota over to the new boat. And this, of course, is the Minn Kota package itself. It is huge. If you haven't got a trailer, roof racks, or a ute, don't even think about putting it in your car. You'll have to get it delivered. I was fortunate that I had roof racks in the boot when I went to pick it up because I hadn't given it much thought. I just said, oh, 60 inches, uh, I'll be able to fit that back and move across inside the car. Well, a lot more than 60 inches because 60 inches is just the shaft length. As I say, I hadn't put much thought into it before I went to pick it up. Now onto the mounting of it, as I've said, being a fiberglass boat, it is not as easy to mount a mincator on it as it is on an aluminium boat. There's all sorts of curves on the fiberglass boat, and even if the aluminium boat does have a few curves, you can cut the aluminium to suit and just weld it onto the hull and melt the mincator onto that. Fiberglass doesn't weld so good, so I have to come up with another solution. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves fitting the motor, we'd best start by unboxing these things. Now this quick release fitting here that I'm opening up suits a range of the Mincad motors, but there's also more than one quick release, so make sure you pick up the one that suits the motor you have. I don't think anything's going to accidentally fall out of this packaging because it's really hard to open up when you want to. And while we're on the subject of packaging, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there is some writing on the inside of the packaging. Do not tear your packaging. Now, I happen to know about it because the guy in the shop where I bought it told me not to tear the packaging and explained why. There's a template drawn on the inside of the packaging that you can use for drilling your holes in the boat to mount the motor. Unfortunately, there's no big red writing on the outside of the package warning you of this, so if you don't know about it, you are likely to dump your box or tear it and the template won't be of any use to you. So here's your warning, do not damage the box. Cut the corner of it, open it out, and you've got a template for drilling your holes into your boat. This is the fitting itself. The centre section bolts onto the boat and the outside section bolts onto the Minn Kota, and you pull this handle out to separate the two sections. The centre section has four countersunk screw holes in it for bolting it to the boat and obviously the countersink goes to the top. Additionally, be aware that the sides of this are slightly bevelled so that it will only fit into the outside section one way. You have to have them the right way. There's a packet there with all the nuts and bolts and other hardware you need to fit this. The only exception is there's no lock. They've given me an R pin to hold the handle from coming off, which is fine if you're not trying to protect it from theft. But unfortunately, I don't have that much faith in my fellow human beings, so I'll be getting a lock and using that instead. Anyway, there it is. That's a quick release fitting. I'd have to say that it does seem slightly overpriced for what it is. On the other hand, all the metal fittings there are marine grade stainless steel. The plastic is fairly precision made, there's no slop in it at all once it's together. It's not something that would be really easy for the average fellow to make in their garage, so I guess it's worth buying. Now the first thing to do now is to get the Minn Kota out of the box and make sure it's going to fit on the boat. I did measure it all up before I bought it and I am confident that it will fit and work the way I want it to. 
that until I get the item out and put it on the boat. I'm just not 100% certain. Now I'd have to say I'm very encouraged by the quality of the packaging here. They've certainly made sure that it's not going to get damaged by careless handling. Obviously if you jump on the packaging you'll do some damage but just the average handler, if they have a small accident, drop it or something, it's probably going to survive quite unharmed. Well, now that it's out, I'll be able to sit it up on the boat and reassure myself that all my measuring was not in vain. Before I can test fit the motor, I need to make myself some room to work. And before I do that, let's have a look and see what we've got in our box of goodies. We've got a weedless wedge propeller here. I'm not sure where the wedge part of it comes in, but I presume the weedless part means that it won't get tangled up in weeds. But of course, that could be just clever marketing words to fool us. And what's in here? Ah, this is a heading sensor. It's a magnetic compass and it just enables us to use the jog function on the motor. Well, so far I haven't found the remote. It must still be somewhere in the packaging, which is a good illustration of why you shouldn't destroy your packaging until you make sure you have all your parts out of it. I'll investigate it shortly and no doubt I'll find it. Next thing is to clear a few things out of the way in order to fit the encoder, and the first thing that has to go is the bow rail. That's just plain in the way. I have seen a couple of methods where people have mounted a encoder with a bow rail. I didn't like any of them. I think it's better just to take it off, store it away, and if I settle the boat, I can take the encoder off and replace the bow rail. Now also, as part of my grand plan of employing a encoder, I don't plan to anchor anymore. So the anchor's going to go make way for the encoder and I'll store that inside the boat for those odd occasions when I do need to have a physical anchor on board. It's really not a good idea not to have one, but there's no need to have it readily available. Now of course the painter rope is going to be staying, so I'll just tidy that up now, store it away. And of course these have all got nuts on the bottom of them, so I'm just going to see what will come out easily. The ones I can't get out by myself, I'll have to ask my wife to come down and hold a spanner on the nut, as I can unscrew them as well. Well, that's all I can manage by myself. I'll have to go and ask my wife for some assistance to get the rest of them off. Well, like that old Chinese joke goes, many hands make light work. With my wife on the inside of the boat holding a spanner on the nuts, I was able to unscrew all of the bolts without any trouble at all and remove the bow rail for storage. But seriously, it's also a testament to the way this was put on, and that was to use a bit of elastic around the feet of the rails to make sure that no salt water could seep down into the thread, and a spot of marine grease on the thread before the nut was fastened on does wonders to make sure that none of this is going to get corroded and it will be easy to get off when the time comes. Well, at long last I've been able to put the mincator up on the bow of the boat, and I'm very happy to say that it fits pretty much as I expected it to. It is long for the boat. I did that because we have been talking about upgrading the boat in the future at some point, and getting something a little bit bigger. So I got the bigger mincator on the basis that I'll move that to the new boat, if and when we manage to get one. Now that's about where it's going to sit on that angle and about that far out from the boat, so that when it's extended, the encoder shaft clears the gunnel, and sitting back there, it looks as though it's going to be quite good. The head of the motor's not sitting out too far. I should still be able to dock on that side, as long as I'm a little bit careful. Yep, I think that'll do nicely. Now, a little bit of a problem here because of the curvature on the deck. It's not going to sit flat, so I'm going to need to make some sort of bracket to bolt it to. I could make some standoffs, I guess, but that just seems to put a lot of pressure on some smaller parts of the deck. So I think I'll make a flat pad out of fiberglass and bolt it to that. That will distribute the load across a larger area of the deck. Well, the next problem is that the anchor well is in the road. I'll get three bolts through the deck, but the fourth one is going to be hanging over the anchor well, which doesn't help a lot. Just plays around that and 
I will employ one of them. I just need to think it out a little bit first. Before we worry too much about the hole missing the deck and going down the anchor well, it's probably time to get the template out so that we can mark them out exactly and then work out how I'm going to address this problem. We just need to split the box down the side and there we have that template. And there's even a sheet of words in there to tell us how to employ it. The only thing of note on that sheet is that it is important to line up a line with the edge of the boat so that the motor doesn't bind going up and down. Read the words, it's worth it. Well that's long enough for one video. I think this series of videos is going to end up being three parts. I don't want to bore you with too much detail, but I don't want to rush through it either because I want you to see exactly how I went about this because I haven't seen any other videos of anyone doing it the same way. I think this has worked very successfully. I'm very happy with the outcome. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll get the next episode in this series up in a week or so, but in the meantime, if you'd like to see more of my fishing videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the like button if you got something out of this video, and don't forget to click on subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. You also need to click on the notify bell so that it sends you a notification when I upload a new video. I plan to get out fishing again soon myself, but I've got a lot of things on at home and at work, which is interfering with my hobby. Most fishermen will understand that. Until next time, good fishing.